This is a quick video response to off-grid heating. I unscrewed the uh, bottom part where the uh, combustion chamber for the fuel is just to show the inside of it. And that's it right there. That's where the fuel line comes in. There it is. So primarily I'll be using this to uh, heat up my uh, garage area so I can have something to do in the winter. During the winter it's pretty much shut down because it's too damn cold in here. But now with this cheap alternative, I brought this on eBay for about 130 bucks with $20 delivery. It's a bargain for me. So uh, California is kind of weird. Uh, EPA rules, they don't want you using a pot belly stove because it doesn't conform to uh, California EPA rules. And uh, you can't buy a pot belly stove online. But somehow this thing here has fallen through the cracks and for $138 uh, this is right up my alley uh, pot belly stoves locally in antique stores is the only place I could get them they run up about 400 bucks or more and I, I can't justify spending that but this here is is the ticket here for me uh, this weekend I'm gonna go ahead and start doing the duck work and uh, hopefully be all nice and toasty in my little dungeon I haven't fired it up yet because I just got it a couple of hours ago but uh, this weekend I got a project to do and that's to put some venting on the gables up there through the roof it's like I have a nice little warm workspace to mess around in alright the rest of the video will be the uh, army instructional video on this piece of gear I also got a Yukon 1950 on order as well that hasn't come in yet so the Space Heater Arctic, or SHA, is intended to heat personnel and equipment housed in five and ten man Arctic tents and can also be used as a food warmer. The heater provides radiant heat which does not require the use of external electrical power and can be safely operated using many types of liquid and solid fuels. The SHA is designed to operate within a temperature range of minus 60 to plus 50 degrees Fahrenheit and can generate heat from 15,000 to 25,000 BTU per hour. The heater is lightweight, rugged, self-contained, and highly mobile to support rapid deployment and rigorous field conditions. All exhaust gases generated by the SHA are kept separate from the breathable heated air and exhausted out through the roof of the tent by means of a multiple section stack assembly. The unit has simple operation and maintenance procedures that will not inhibit the primary mission capability. The SHA operates with a variety of liquid fuels that include JP5, JP8, kerosene, and Jet A, as well as diesel fuels DFA, DF1, and DF2. Warning, do not use gasoline. Using gasoline or other unauthorized fuel will create a fire danger and potential for explosion. The SHA also operates with solid fuels such as wood and coal. Each section is stamped on its side with a number for easy identification and crimped on its smaller end in order to fit into the next higher section. The completed stack assembly seats in the stack adapter assembly, allowing combustion gases to discharge outside the tent during operation. When disassembled, the sections nest inside each other for storage in the upper portion of the heater body. The heater body is the basic shell of the heater. Its components include a lid assembly, which fits into a circular opening on the top surface of the heater. The built-in sight glass allows the operator to monitor the condition of the burner flame. The lid opening permits access to the burner assembly when priming and igniting liquid fuel. The hinged front door is secured with a slide latch. When opened, it allows access to install and remove the solid fuel grate and burner cover assembly. In solid fuel mode, it permits the addition and lighting of fuel. A built-in sliding draft gate allows burn rate control during solid fuel operation. During liquid fuel operation, the cover is positioned in the frame of the door assembly and held in position by the closed door to achieve a tight air seal. When using solid fuel, the burner cover is positioned on top of the burner shell 
to prevent ashes, coals, and embers from falling into the burner. The solid fuel grate elevates the burning solid fuel to allow for air circulation and to provide an area for ash deposits. The fuel grate is stored upside down and must be placed on its feet before using. The rear door fits on the rear of the heater and contains the parts stowed inside the heater body during transport of the heaters. Items stored in this area include the fuel flow control valve, stack cap assembly, and gravity feed adapter. The burner shell assembly is where combustion occurs when operating the SHA in liquid fuel mode. It consists of a perforated burner shell, high fire ring, and up tube, which is welded into the base of the burner shell. It permits fuel to flow into the down tube assembly during operation. The capped down tube slides over the up tube and can be removed through the lid opening. A superheater ring is located on the exterior for heat transfer. During operation, fuel flows into the up tube where its level is gravity maintained with the fuel flow control valve. Combustion heat vaporizes the fuel and fuel vapor is expelled from the up tube. This vapor flows through the down tube and into the burner shell where it ignites. Both the down tube and up tube are cleaned with the reaming tool which is stored in the front storage enclosure. The fuel flow control valve mounts to a T-shaped bracket and slides into position on the right side of the heater body. This valve will function safely only with the fuels approved for use with the SHA. When set properly, internal orifices match the viscosities of the fuels being used and meter the correct fuel flow to the burner. The fuel flow control valve discharge hose delivers fuel from the control valve to the burner assembly. A cup and cable assembly is attached to the bracket and is used for measuring fuel to prime the heater in liquid fuel mode. The fuel can stand assembly allows the fuel can when operating in liquid fuel mode gravity fed liquid fuel flows from the inverted fuel can through the fuel hose to the fuel flow control valve. Fuel settings are made on the control valve based on the temperature of the fuel being used. Fuel is directed through the orifices inside the valve and flows to the burner up tube located inside the burner shell assembly. With access through the lid opening a small amount of fuel is poured and ignited in the bottom of the burner shell assembly. After five to ten minutes, enough heat is produced by the burning priming fuel to vaporize the fuel within the up tube. Fuel vapors are generated and discharged into the down tube where they enter the burner shell assembly, mix with air, and are combusted. By the time all the priming fuel is consumed, the combustion process has been established and will continue as long as there is fuel in the fuel can or the fuel flow control valve is in the on position. Air required for combustion is drawn through the bottom of the heater and into the burner shell assembly. When burning liquid fuel, the burner cover is set into the door frame, the door shut and latched. This prevents air leakage into the upper heater body, which would impair operating efficiency. The flame is monitored through the sight glass on the lid assembly. Combustion gases pass from the burner shell assembly into the upper heater body through the stack adapter and into the stack assembly where they are exhausted outside the shelter through the stack cap assembly. Heat output is controlled by positioning the fuel flow adjustment knob on the control valve limiting the amount of fuel sent to the burner shell assembly for combustion. When operating in solid fuel mode the burner cover is set over the burner shell assembly and prevents ashes, coals, and embers from collecting in the burner during operation. Paper and small pieces of wood or coal are positioned and ignited on the solid fuel grate, which elevates the fuel to ensure proper air circulation. It also provides a space for falling ash to accumulate. When the kindling begins to burn steadily, larger pieces of wood or coal are added. The flame is monitored through the sight glass. Combustion gases flow through the stack adapter, up the stack assembly, and out the stack cap assembly to the outside of the shelter.
Heat output is controlled by the amount of fuel placed in the heater as well as the positioning of the sliding draft gate which controls air intake. Care should be used in determining the amount of solid fuel to be placed in the heater. If coal is used, remember that it is a very dense fuel and will provide very high heat output. A small amount of coal should be used to start the heater. Do not overfill the heater as it may overfire the unit and make it very difficult to control the heat output. The fuel flow control valve controls the amount of fuel being provided to the burner. The fuel selector controls the fuel flow through the valve and is set according to the ambient temperature. This is done by pulling up on the knob and rotating it to the proper temperature setting. If the heater is to be operated above minus 25 degrees Fahrenheit, the fuel selector control should be set in this position. When operating at temperatures below minus 25 degrees Fahrenheit, the fuel selector control should be set in this position. The flow adjustment knob controls the flow of fuel from the float chamber to the burner. The fuel on-off control restricts the flow of fuel from the fuel supply to the control valve. The sight glass is located in the center of the lid assembly and permits the operator to view the flame in the burner. A sliding draft gate controls the heat output by limiting the amount of air flow into the burner. To operate the SHA in liquid fuel mode, adjust the fuel flow control valve by lifting the fuel selector control knob and set it in accordance with the outside temperature. There are two positions above minus 25 degrees Fahrenheit and below minus 25 degrees Fahrenheit. Pull the knob and rotate it to the appropriate position based on the outside ambient temperature. Release the control knob, making sure that the knob locks in the detent for the desired position. Set fuel on-off control to the on position. Set flow adjustment knob to high. Wait 5 to 10 minutes in order to allow the fuel flow control valve and burner down tube to fill with fuel. Shake as a final check, open the door assembly and make sure that the burner cover has been installed in the door frame. Shut and latch the door. To prime the burner, open the lid and be sure that the down tube is securely fitted over the up tube inside the burner. Hold the priming cup under priming valve on fuel supply hose. Open the valve slowly and fill the cup with fuel. Shut valve when cup is full. Pour fuel into the bottom of burner. Pour a second cup of fuel in the burner if the outside temperature is below minus 25 degrees Fahrenheit. Roll a short length of toilet tissue or paper into a ball and clean the excess fuel in the cup. Light the tissue and drop it into the bottom of burner in order to ignite the priming fuel. Use the cleaning tool to ensure that the tissue remains at the bottom of the burner. Close the lid assembly. When heater has warmed up and begins to give off heat in approximately 5 to 10 minutes, gradually adjust the flow adjustment knob to desired heat output. If using coal as a solid fuel, place 5 or 6 pieces of coal that are approximately 2 inches in diameter on top of the paper. Light the paper with a match. When kindling begins to burn steadily, place two or three larger pieces of wood or a small amount of additional coal on top of kindling. Fuel may be fed through the front door assembly. Shut and latch door. Keep door and lid assemblies shut except when fueling fire or removing ashes. Adjust sliding draft gate. Open more to increase burn rate and close more to decrease burn rate. Monitor the flame through the sight glass on the lid. The door and lid assemblies are very hot during operation. Use the cleaning tool to open the lid or unlatch open the front door.